Hey everyone, this is Relics. And I'm Nagadron. And we're watching round nine of the World of Tanks Classic League Season 1 on Fjords. With the team we are in, Vlad at Tanks, facing off against Crimson Blade 3. So let's get it going. Alright, so our team, Vlad at Tanks, is running with two 50Bs, two IS-7s, two T110s, a T54 for medium, a T50-2 for scouting, and a GWE and 261 for artillery. So we're going for a pretty standard point setup here. Uh, contrasting, Crimson Blade 3 is running two IS-7s, four T110s, a Batshat, two Tier 8 artillery, and a 50-2. Those two being a uh, Type B and a 261. Right off the bat here, expecting to see and do find uh, an enemy scout. It was something we found in testing that it took less than 30 seconds, 40 seconds, for a 50 2 to make it from the one side up to that point in the hill and spot everything coming up that hill. So it was imperative to us right off the bat that we get somebody up there to really uh, face hug him, ram him, do whatever it takes to make sure he didn't get those lights. Which you just did a good job of. Well, fortunately, one of our artillery tagged him in the first pass, so he not only stopped him from getting to his point, but made it a lot easier for everybody else to shoot him as well. Uh, here we've got two 50Bs and a T-54 sprinting up into that A-8 portion. Uh, another thing we noticed is that the, the midline on this map is actually diagonal from A-8 all the way down to about J-4. The only real risk there being if somebody runs in a lot of stuff from the F-road. But as long as you've got a couple tanks there in like the E5 area, that's a lot less of a risk. Yeah, I know that was one of my initial concerns when we were looking at where to place tanks down there. Um, so we actually held those two IS-7s back just a little bit so we can get spotting over that edge to make sure we didn't have a, a full rush down the F-line. And as usual, I was wrong and we didn't have to worry about that anyways. It's always good to be prepared, though. As soon as those T110s made it to E5 or so, pushed the IS-7s down, then had a nice nice spread control of the map. Here, you can see C3 has kind of relented the northeastern corner, which is smart. There's probably not three tanks up there. And if, if there are, um, it would be very risky to try and take on two 50Bs and a T54. On the one hand, you'll probably take out one of the 50Bs during the long reload. On the other hand, if you're not careful, you're going to lose at least one and a half tanks worth of hit points in that engagement. So it's really just not worth pressing. Yeah, and the, ni the nice part about where we were holding back up there, um, artillery can still support us if they do come around that corner until they get to those rocks. So it puts even more risk on them up there. So right now we know that they've got a couple T110s behind this mountain here at E6. So no real need to rush anything we've got going on. Uh, just trying to get some shots on that stuff from the north. Maybe move an artillery up to around A5, which I think we've already done at this point. And uh, just get some free shots, try and take some hit points off of those tanks before we actually have to engage them with our own. Yeah, I think I just spotted that IS-7 that was down at, like, H4. So we know they at least have a tank over there at this point. Yeah, CB3 was definitely on point. They knew what they were doing going into this map. They tried to hold the same diagonal line. Unfortunately, the loss of the 50-2 and the incline of that hill getting up in the north really kind of cost them that middle line position. So the big question is what they're going to do to try and recover from that. Interesting thing to note that I'm just noticing now watching the, the 250Bs when we were up there. If we'd actually came down a little bit more, we might have had a better angle shooting down um, on their hillside. It looks like we were just in a bad angle there. On the other hand, if artillery can hit it, um, it would be nice if the 50Bs could fire as well. The nice advantage of being up there is most of the time you can't be lit. But given the view range of T110s and the position they're in, they probably would actually see those 50Bs. So that's kind of some unnecessary damage to be taken right now. Um, what we were trying to do during this portion was just whittle some tanks or some hit points off those T110s 
and then we would take the T110s from E5 along with the 50Bs from the north and try and really flush them out. One thing you'll notice though, the more passes that I do here on this 50-2, the less T110s are being lit. Ooh, there's some back shots from the IS-7 over on the other corner there. And that's another good point. The IS-7 is no longer on that southern corner anymore. Forge's IS-7 was able to move up. Or rather, ours. Forge's. It's all the same. So right now we're discussing where those T110s probably are, what kind of adjustments they've made. Um, I'm starting to do a little bit more aggressive lighting on that area, starting to get kind of an inclination that maybe they've pulled all of it out, and we're not entirely sure where it's gone. Uh, one thing we've noticed, though, is that one of our T110s is actually disconnected throughout this entire thing at some sort of unknown point. So... He, looks, he looks really threatening right there, though. At least he disconnected in an aggressive position, right? So if you're on the other side of that, look at it. You're thinking he's just waiting for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are no enemies on the other side, so it's kind of pointless. At least it looks good doing it, though. So now with the scout trying to get a little bit deeper, just progressively lighting making sure I'm not lit before I go in for another run. But at this point, you're crossing a center line, so you just have to commit and keep going straight. The last thing you want to do is turn around. Start running in this back corner just to make sure there's no artillery back here. And there isn't. So at this point, we know all the rest of their tanks are on that 9-0 line going up that hill. Right, so we start adjusting all of our tanks north and south, start setting up a nice little pincher move, try and get that to happen as fluidly and as synchronized as possible. One of our T-110s is still gone, however, uh, one of their T-110s is dead as well. So is our T-50-2. Right <laughs> violating my own statement, the last thing I want to do after crossing in front of that many tanks is turn around and do it again. But for some reason, it seemed like maybe I could get by. I think you just figured that, you know, you've done your job. You just want to sit back and, and watch everybody else do theirs. So now we're repositioning artillery, trying to get it to at least be in useful positions. Uh, it's pretty easy to say that this is going to be a tank on tank battle but with a position that cb3 is in dug completely in behind that mountain there at the nine they will have both artillery brought to bear either on the north or south probably better on the south considering firing north is kind of a tricky ordeal but either way you go you will take two artillery rounds so right now we're just trying to find a way to get our artillery into the mix as well at least make some sort of trade for hit points when that happens. Hey, and our T-110 is back. And fortunately, the, the spot that we have in the north there with the 261 is going to be extremely sketchy for what he can shoot on and how safe he's going to be if they decide to push anything up that way. But since artillery can't really reliably fire from their side um, up on him, he, he could probably still hide behind that rock fairly easily. Looks like we're kind of figuring out our positions in the north. 
I know when we were up there, we, we saw the one bat shot and a T-110, and so we're kind of arguing whether, like, which way best to approach them up there to get artillery good angles. Um, we were discussing maybe putting the, the T-54, trying to rush them across and get behind that rock at B-0, where they wouldn't be able to dig them out, but we'd be able to get spotted on everything over there and maybe lock them down with artillery. Um, unfortunately, the T-110 there is, I, I don't believe he's alone. Although I think that was an arty shot that just came in over there it from was, our GWE. Was, uh, right. He was able to get some sort of a back shot on that. Uh, our T-54 poked forward to light it. Um, for some reason, though, some of the other weaker tanks up in the north, particularly the 50Bs, uh, one of them at least, keeps poking. I guess trying to pour, perform some sort of... Um, cornering tactics like a lot of regular tanks do but it's really important to note that when your armor is that paper thin you don't want to give the other team a chance to shoot you at all so right now uh, i was trying to get everybody to really just stay back but close enough to where when the call was made that they could all get their guns to bear at the same time and while sort of just micromanaging all those different positions and where they're going to be People just started poking again, and they were taking additional hit points off each other. And uh, Needless to say, this part is not performed as perfectly as it should be. Yeah, exactly. It certainly wasn't my finest hour. Um, we definitely should have played a lot more passive up there. Um, let them come around, let our south team give us a little bit more support down there and take the attention of the T-110s. Just let us hold them up there. Probably would have been better off bringing a, one of the T110s up to the top and send one of the 50Bs down just so we have a little bit more solid of a force defending up there and maybe a little bit extra firepower down south. So now we've got all of our tanks starting to press in. Two T110s are going the short way. Both of those I7s are really close together, just begging to be artied. One of them caught the brunt of it. Fortunately, the splash was very minimal for the other. Yeah, it must have been from the 261 there. And he's out. As well as I7. That was a really good move having the T1 the two T110s close on the hill. So the IS7s were distracted and the two T110s could get up real close and nasty with them. So you've got three T110s up there in the north. R54 just went down. To an ammo rack, it looks like. He was within one-shot range anyways, I think. Yeah, here's the part where not our best day up in the north there as we're getting poked and shot by the uh, the T-110s. Just lost our 261 up there. It is important to note, though, that whether they're winning or losing, they are doing what they need to do, which is just distract the T-110s to give these last two tanks here in the south uh, up to the three that we have along with an artillery. Yeah, we can see they did pull one back. And I think that second one is coming down too, it looks like. We're trying to get shots from the top there. Minute 30 left. We can see we have one IS-7 on the cap, although... Not going to matter there. Great position on that GWE. I didn't notice that he moved that far south to get angles straight up the hill. Uh, actually, after he fired on those T-110s in the north for the first time, he started cutting in as quickly as possible. I guess when he planted down there, he realized that he didn't really have greatest angles on where the majority of the tanks would be. Now, I think that was the part where I sacrificed our other 50B so I could take out that T-110 and come from behind there. Yeah, great fight, CB3. Good tactical moves there. And uh, grats to Forge. <laughs>